Yeah, some people will be reproduced there. Good morning, students. Today I am going to explain how to calculate allowable safe settlement pressure. Allowable safe settlement pressure. So earlier I discussed how to calculate safe bearing capacity of soil. So that equations are considering the shear failure. Now I am going to considering the settlement. The so bearing capacity by considering the settlement. That means the bearing capacity should be Sorry for disturbance. So earlier, theta is given some equations to estimate the bearing capacity of soil based on shear failure. So in, in today's uh, uh, class, I am going to explain the calculation of net allowable safe settlement pressure by considering the settlement. That means if you apply pressure on the soil mass, the settlement should be within permissible limits. So Tengs has given one equation to calculate the net allowable safe settlement pressure. So net allowable safe settlement pressure equal to 1.40 into n minus 3 b plus 0 0.3 divided by 2b whole square w gamma into rd into s. So let me explain one by one. So QNM means net allowable safe settlement pressure. That means if we, we apply this pressure, the settlement will be within permissible limits. So N is known as a corrected SPT number. So after corrections, power button correction and dialectic correction, the SPT number. V is known as width of the footing. RD is known as depth correction factor. So here depth correction factor RD is given by 1 plus depth of the footing by width of the footing. So depth reduction factor should be less than or equal to 1.2. Suppose if it exceeds greater than 1.2, it exceeds the 1.2, you need to restrict the RT value to 1.2. So suppose if RT is uh, uh, 2. Point something, it is greater than 1.2. Next, you need to take RT is equal to 1.2. Suppose if RT equal to 0 0.8, so you should take 0 0.8. So the maximum allowable value of a depth correction factor is 1.2. So RC, RD is, should be less than 1.2 or equal to 1.2. The next water table correction factor W gamma is equal to 0 0.5 into 1 plus ZW2 divided by B. Here ZW2 means depth of water table below the footing. ZW, you can see the in figure. Uh, ZW2 equal to depth of water table below the footing. So while, con while solving the theoretical problems, ZW2 is given in the problem. So whatever is the ZW2 that is given in the problem, that is we need to substitute in the equation. But while calculate, while doing consultancy works, 
furniture projects or manual projects while doing competency work. ZW2 is always taken as W gamma. Whatever correction factor is always taken as 0.5 because bearing capacity is always considered for worst conditions. So in summer seasons, so the soil is in dry condition, it has more strength, more load bearing capacity. But during rainy seasons, so the water table rises to the ground surface, the bearing capacity, half of the bearing capacity will be reduced. That's why we need we need to consider always the worst conditions. That is assuming that the water table is at the ground surface. So while testing the soil, there is no water table. Even though there is no water table, you should assume that the water table is at the ground surface. This is only for consultancy works. But while cal while doing uh, critical problem, uh, uh, theoretical problems, so you need to consider the JW2 value given in the problem. I am telling this one for doing consultancy works only. So even though uh, there is no water table, we should consider water table is at the ground surface because bearing capacity is always considered for worst possible conditions. Suppose if you test the soil in summer season, the bearing capacity will be more. Suppose if you test the same soil in uh, uh, during rainy seasons, the conditions, the bearing capacity may be less. So we need to consider the worst possible conditions. So in the equation, X is known as settlement. So Q and A is equal to the last term is known as settlement. So S is known as allowable settlement. So for example, for example, if allowable settlement is 25 mm, then net self settlement pressure equation is 1.40 into n minus 3 b plus 0 0.3 by 2 p whole square into w gamma into r d into 25. So here s is 25. So 25 into 1.40 1 equal to 35. So the equation may be modified as 35 into n minus 3 into b plus 0 0.3 by 2 b 2 b whole square into w gamma into r d. So this equation is valid only for 25 mm settlement. Suppose if allowable settlement is 40 mm, then 1.40 into 40 equal to 56. So our net allowable save settlement pressure equal to 56 into n minus 3 into b plus 0 0.3 by 2b for square w gamma into rd. So this equation is valid only for 40 mm settlement. So suppose if it is a 35 mm settlement, you should multiply 35 with the 1.40 you can get one constant. So the equation may be modified according to that constant. So settlement is directly proportional to pressure. So if you know settlement uh, allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement, you can find out allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm settlement by using this re relation. So allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement divided by allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm settlement is equal to 25 mm settlement divided by 40 mm settlement. So if you know allowable settlement for 25 mm, you can find allowable settlement. So if you know allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement, you can find net allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm settlement by using this equation or relation. So model one problem model we have three models first one is s2 footing is 1.2 meters wide is located at 1.5 meters in a non cohesive soil deposit for which corrected spt number equal to 20 so already it is corrected spt corrected spt number equal to 20 water table is located at 2 meters below the ground level find the allowable bearing pressure of soil for 25 mm settlement and 40 mm settlement. So we need to find out the allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement and allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm settlement. So the equation is 35. So for 25 mm settlement, it is 35 into n minus 3 into b plus 0.3 by 2b whole square into w gamma into rd. So corrected number equal to 20, width of putting equal to 1.2 meters, so depth of putting equal to 1.5 meters.
So here, I'm uh, I'm find out if I have, I am returning the determining the depth detection factor. So R T is equal to one plus zero point two into depth of footing by width of footing. It should be less than or equal to one point. So R T value one point two five. So it is greater than one point two. So R T is taken as one point two. If it is less than one point two, take that value. If it is more than one point two, restrict the up to one point. So here one R D value is greater than one point two. So take only one point two, not take one point two. Next bar table correction factor. So W gamma equal to zero point five into one plus J W two by B. Here depth of water table below the footing equal to zero point five meters. So J W two equal to zero point five. Water table correction factor equal to zero point seven zero eight. So net allowable pressure for twenty five mm sediment is equal to. So you know the formula by substituting all these things. In this formula, we will find out 197.46 kilonewton per meter square. Next, net allowable bearing pressure per 40 mm sediment. We have another equation. Only the constant changes. For 25 mm sediment, the constant is 35. For 40 mm sediment, the constant is 56. So, net allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm sediment equal to 315.936 kilonewton per meter square. So next alternate method also we have. So if you know allowable bearing pressure for part of a settlement, we can find allowable bearing pressure for part of a settlement. Here suppose you know that allowable bearing pressure for part of a settlement it is one and is one point four six. So allowable bearing pressure for part of a settlement we need to find out. So net allowable net allowable bearing pressure for part of a settlement is equal to part of by Twenty five into one ninety seven point four six, so we will get the same thing. So three fifteen point nine three six kilonewton per meter square. So whichever is convenient, you can use that one. So you can find out directly by using the equation, or you can find out the by by using the relation. Self settlement pressure is directly proportional to pressure. More the pressure, more will be the settlement. So till now. We determined the only net allowable bearing pressure. Here I am find, uh, trying, find, trying to find out grass allowable bearing pressure. Grass means including the self weight of the soil above the footing. So 197.46. This is the net allowable pressure for 25 mm settlement plus 20 into 1.5. That is the self weight of the soil above the footing. You will get grass 227.46. So similarly for a 40 mm settlement. Grass allowable pressure equal to 345.936 kilonewton per meter square. Here, allowable pressure for 25 mm settlement means 197.46 is the net allowable pressure for 25 mm settlement. If you apply 197.46 pressure on the soil, the settlement will be within 25 mm. Within 25 or less than 25, so settlement will be within permissible limits. Suppose for net allowable pressure for part of settlement is equal to 315.936. If you apply 315.936 pressure on the soil, the settlement will be part of M R less than part of. That is that's why it is known as allowable bearing pressure for part of settlement. Net means excluding the self weight of the soil. Grass means including the self weight of the soil mass. So Q N A it is a net allowable pressure. That means excluding the self weight of the soil. Q G A means grass allowable pressure. That means including the self weight of the soil above the footing. So here model two. So determine the net self settlement pressure for two meters by two meters footing. At a depth of 1.5 meters in a medium dense sand, so that the total settlement does not exceed 25 mm. So the average SPT below below the footing of 20 for 30 centimeters penetration after a seating drive of 15 centimeters. So the bulk heat weight is 17 kilonewton per meter cube. Water table is at a depth of 5 meters below the ground level. 
what will be the net bearing capacity if water table rises to the base of the foundation so first we need to find out the net allowable pressure when the water table is thrown in figure then second case we need to find out the net allowable bearing pressure when water table is at the ground surface here breadth of the footing equal to 2 meters depth of the footing equal to 1.4 meters spt number equal to 20 gamma b is equal to 17 kilometer per meter cube so allowable settlement is 25 mm. so we need to use the uh, 25 mm settlement equation so this is the so case one when water table is at a depth of 5 meters below the ground level so here compare the width of the foundation and depth of water table below the foundation so here width of the foundation equal to 2 meters depth of water table below the footing equal to 3.5 meters so depth of water table is greater than width of the foundation so no water table correction is required case one it belongs to case one hence water table correction factor is not required so otherwise you can also find out the uh, water table correction factor by using the equation here jw2 equal to width of the foundation so we need to restrict jw2 to width of the foundation so 0 0.5 into 1 plus Bf by Bf is equal to 0 0.5 into 2 that is equal to 1.0 that means no water table correction W gamma becomes 1.0 so there is no water table correction factor so Rd depth reduction factor Rd equal to 1 plus 0 0.2 into depth of the pudding divided by width of the pudding it is less than or equal to 1.2 so rd equal to 1.15 it is less than 1.2 hence take rd equal to 1.15 suppose if rd is greater than 1.2 you need to restrict rd is equal to 1.2 so after substituting these values in a net allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement equation we will get net allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement is equal to 226.23 that means if you apply this pressure on the soil the settlement will be equal to 25 mm or less than 25 mm. So net allowable bearing pressure for uh, net allowable grass pressure equal to so net allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm settlement plus sulfate of the soil above the foundation. So net allowable pressure. Is sir, sir. Ah, Krishna. Sir, any comment? Ki join or fail or something? Join or something? Fail, failed and also no, sir. Meeting exit out and also no, sir. How oh, now? No, sir. Okay, permission order like that. Yes, sir. Screen share will be there, sir. We are proud of him, sir. Okay, sir. You are the person who is coming. Just now, permission order, sir. Screen share, sir. Thank you. So net allowable grass pressure equal to 251.17 kilo per metric cube. So case two. So earlier there is no water table correction factor because depth of water table below the footing is greater than width of the foundation. So case two here the water table rises to the base of the footing. So when the water table rises to the base of the footing, Jw2 becomes zero. So if you substitute Jw2 equal to zero water table correction factor equal to 0 0.5 so by substituting this 0 0.5 in this equation the bearing capacity is reduced half of the bearing capacity will be reduced so net allowable bearing pressure for 25 mm sediment equal to 113.115 kilo per meter square so here 25 mm for grass allowable pressure equal to 138.615 by including the Sulfate of the soil above the foundation. So, model 3 a square footing is required to carry a net load of 230 kN per meter square. Determine the size of the footing with the depth of the foundation is 2 meters and total allowable settlement is 40 m. The SPT number in sandy soil is 10 is equal to 12. The so settlement equal to 40 m, depth of the footing equal to 2 meters. SPT, corrected SPT number equal to 12. So net allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm is equal to 120, 
120 kilonewton per meter square. Sorry, one. It is not 120. It is 230. You see the problem. The net allowable pressure is equal to 230 kilonewton per meter square. So if you substitute all these values in the party amount settlement equation. 56 into n minus 3 into b plus 0 0.3 by 2b four square into rd into w gamma. So let us take the one by one. So there is no water table, hence the w gamma equal to 1.0. So no water table question is required. So the w gamma may be eliminated. Next rd is equal to 1 plus 0 0.2 into depth of the footing by width of the footing. 1 plus 0 0.2 into depth of the footing is equal to 2, 2 by B. So here, net allowable bearing pressure for part M equal to 230. So 230 equal to 56 into N value equal to 12. So we need to find out the breadth of the footing. So finally, we will get one cubic equation. By solving this cubic equation, breadth of the footing equal to 1.5 meters. We will get the breadth of the footing equal to 1.5 meters. So here, everything is given. But wet of the footing is not given. So allowable generally we will find out allowable bearing pressure by using the equation. But here allowable bearing pressure for part of settlement is given, but wet of the footing is unknown. So all other parameters are given. So we need to find out the what the breadth of the foundation. This is model three. So next, the so first things as given uh, uh, for equations for net allowable bearing pressure. Next, Mayor House also given some formulas for net allowable bearing pressure. So, for 25 mm settlement, if breadth of footing equal to less than or equal to 1.2 meters, net allowable bearing pressure equal to 12.2 into N into W gamma into RD. RD is known as depth relation factor, W gamma is known as water table correction factor, N is known as corrected SPT number. Suppose if the width of the foundation is greater than 1.2 meters net allowable bearing pressure equal to 8.1 into n into b plus 0.3 by b whole square w gamma into rd. So all terms are same as in tanks equation except rd is equal to. So here uh, so the problem is the equation is changed by Mayer house. The so depth relation factor is equal to 1 plus 0 0.33 into depth of the pudding divided by width of the pudding. It should be less than or equal to 1.33. Maximum value is 1.33. If it exceeds 1.33, you need to take RD value as 1.33. Next, Bowles equation. So, Bowles in 1977 suggested that the net allowable bearing pressure given by Mayerhoff's equation can be safely increased by 50%. Thus, for a settlement of 25 mm, so if you know the Mayerhoff's equation, you can get the Bowles equation like this. So, 50% increased. So 12.2 in Mayer House equation, it is 12.2 multiply with 1.5, you will get 18.3. If breadth of footing is less than or equal to 1.2, so net allowable bearing pressure equal to 18.3 into n into w gamma into r. If breadth of footing is greater than 1.20, then so 8.1 into 1.5, 50% is increased. So net allowable bearing capacity equal to 12.2 into n into b plus 0 0.3 by b whole square w gamma into rt. So is code equation. So is code given uh, equation for part m settlement. It is uh, similar to tanks equation for part m settlement, but the constant is uh, different 55.4. At the same time, is code not considered the depth reduction factor rt. But in tanks equation, he considered the depth reduction factor. So net allowable bearing pressure for 40 mm settlement equal to 55.4 into n minus 3 into b plus 0 0.3 by 2b whole square into w in w gamma. So when compared to IS code equation, tanks equation is popular. So nowadays, IS code equation is uh, not used by engineers. So tanks equation, all are following the tanks equation. That's why I have solved uh, problems in tanks equation only. Next, in allowable bearing pressure, another topic is 
settlement and allowable bearing pressure by based on plate flow test. So it, it is already discussed in unit one. In unit one, I have already discussed about how to estimate the net allowable bearing pressure and the settlement by using plate flow test. So that is also over. The next topic is settlement of soil. So before uh, discuss the settlement of soil, let me explain different types of settlements. These are two more questions. So we have so many types of settlements here. Initial settlement, primary or consolidation settlement, secondary settlement, uniform settlement, differential settlement, angular distraction, total settlement. So initial settlement means when, lo when load is applied at soil mass, immediately after the application of the load, there is a vertical displacement of soil. That means there is a change in volume of soil mass in vertical direction. So does not take any time. It happens immediately after the application of the soil mass. So immediately after the application of the soil, application of the load on the soil, there will be some settlement of soil mass, which is known as initial settlement. So this settlement is due to expulsion of air from wide spaces. So it does not take any time. It, it happens immediately after the application of the load. So which is known as initial settlement. This initial settlement is a uh, maximum in the case of cohesionless size, that is granular size. The second thing is primary settlement or consolidation settlement. So after expulsion of air, the load uh, is uh, transferred to water. So in the case of fully saturated size, the entire load is taken by water. But water is incompressible, galvanized tight to escape from the wide spaces. So uh, due to Expulsion of water, there will be some settlement, there will be some change in soil volume of soil mass in vertical direction. So, that change in volume of soil mass due to expulsion of water is known as primary settlement or consolidation settlement. So, when load is applied in soil mass, the first the load is first to transfer to air. So, air will expel out. It is known as initial settlement. Then, load transfer to water so, so that there is a change in volume of soil mass, which is known as primary consolidation settlement. Then third one is secondary settlement. The so secondary settlement means when load is applied in soil mass, that load is transferred first to air, then water, then on adsorbed water. So due to attractive forces between soil and water, the soil consists of clay particle consists of some uh, adsorbed water around the soil particles. Clay particle has a negative charge, water particles has a negative and positive charge. This negative charge always attracts the positively charged water molecules so that immediately surrounding the clay particle due to attractive forces, some water may be held in the soil mass. This water is known as adsorbed water. So due to the application of the load, these attractive forces are destroyed so that the water also, adsorbed water also expelled out. So because of this, there will be some change in volume of soil mass. At the same time, there will be some change in uh, shape of the soil particles. So because of application of the load, the soil particles also changes its shape. So because of plastic readjustment of soil particles, and because of expulsion of adsorbed water, there may be some change in volume of soil mass. This change in volume of soil mass, uh, is known as secondary settlement. So it continues till the end of the life of the structure. So initial settlement is uh, significant in the case of granular soils. Primary or consolidated settlement is significant, significant in the case of fully saturated soils. Secondary settlement is significant in the case of organic soils. So total settlement means it is the sum of initial settlement primary settlement and secondary settlement. So total settlement is sum of initial settlement, primary settlement and secondary settlement. So very important two more questions. Differential between initial settlement and primary settlement, differential between primary settlement and secondary settlement. So what do you mean by total settlement? So frequently asked question in JNT. So initial settlement is due to expulsion of air, primary settlement is due to expulsion of water, secondary settlement is due to expulsion of adsorbed water and plastic readjustment of solid particles. So total settlement equal to 
sum of initial settlement, primary settlement, and secondary settlement. So then the uniform settlement. So due to application of the law, the foundation may be settled. Due to application of the while bearing the law, the foundation is subjected to law, it may cause some vertical displacement. If the settlement of all footings are uniform magnitude, the settlements of all footings in the structure. So if you take a whatever any any footing, if the settlements are uniformly, then it is known as uniform settlement. If the magnitude of the settlement is uniform for all the footings, it is known as uniform settlement. If the magnitude of settlement for all footings is not similar, it is different for one footing to another footing. One footing is settled by 25 mm, another footing is settled by 40 mm. In such a case, the settlement is called as differential settlement. So, angular distortion means it is the vertical displacement of structure with respect to vertical axis. It is also known as tilting of structure. Tilting. Generally, the structure should be straight, but due to some uh, changes in the soil particles, changes in subsoil profile, there may be some tilting of soil, the tilting, tilting of structure. So this vertical displacement of so this displacement of structure with respect to vertical axis, displacement of structure with respect to vertical axis is known as angular distortion. So now let us discuss how to calculate initial settlement and primary settlement. So generally secondary settlement is very very small, it is ignored. So it is very important to find out the initial settlement and primary or consolidation settlement. So in this chapter I am going to explain how to calculate the initial settlement and how to calculate the primary or consolidation settlement. These two are very important. So all the definitions of these settlements are very important. Initial settlement, primary or consolidated settlement, secondary settlement, uniform settlement, differential settlement, angular distortion, total settlement, all these things are very important for university examination. So, initial settlement. The decrease in volume of soil mass due to escape of air from voids that is known as initial or immediate settlement. So, it is happened due to application of the law. Immediate settlement is more in the case of dry cohesion soil, it is called as immediate settlement because just after the application of the load, immediately just after the application of the load, there will be some change in volume of soil mass. The change in volume of soil mass is known as initial settlement. It takes it doesn't take any time. That's why it is called as immediate settlement. So in the case of cohesion side, Kajak is given one equation to find out the initial settlement. So initial settlement in cohesion side is equal to Q into B into 1 minus U square by ES into IS. So let me explain one by one the parameters involved in the equation. So Q is known as net foundation pressure. So pressure equal load by area. Suppose sometimes pressure load is load will be given. So load divided by area will give the net foundation pressure. B is known as width of the foundation. U is known as Poisson's ratio. ES is known as Young's modulus of soil. IS is known as influencing factor. It depends on shape and the rigidity of foundation, whether it is rectangle, rectangle foundation or square foundation or any other type of foundation. So it uh, IS is known as influencing factor. It depends for the rectangle foundation, it is different for square foundation. SI is known as immediate or initial setting. So influencing factor. L by B ratio and influence factor. So if L by B ratio is 1.0, it happens in square footing. For square footing, L is equal to B. L by B is equal to 1.0. Influence factor equal to 0 0.56. So every student should remember this value. So it may be given in the problem, it may not be given in the problem. So for square footing, influence factor equal to 0 0.56. 0 0.56. It may be given in the problem, it may not be given in the problem. So you should remember this one, 0 0.56. So the L by B ratio changes. So for 2.0, IS equal to 0 0.7. For 3.0, influence factor equal to 0 0.88. So like that, influence factor varies depends upon the L by B ratio. So for other L by B ratios, 
hemoglobin given the graph or hemoglobin given the directly influencing uh, influencing factor value in the problem but for square footing it may be given or it may not be given is equal to 0.56 the model one the lower case coming and square footing 2 meters by 2 meters resting in a deep deposit of clay is 7 kilonewton. Unconfined compute distance of clay is 150 kilonewton per meter square. So compute the immediate settlement. So it is a clay soil. The load coming on the clay is 600 kilonewton. The square footing size is 2 meters by 2 meters. Unconfined compute distance of clay is 150 kilonewton per meter square. This is a square footing. Influencing factor will not be given in the problem. May be given or may not be given. So square footing, it is square footing. You mentioned the problem. It is a square footing. So by default, it is equal to 0 0.56. Width of foundation equal to 2 meters. So load coming on the foundation is equal to 600 kilo tons. Pressure, net pressure or net foundation pressure coming on the footing equal load by area. 600 divided by 2 by 2. So net foundation pressure equal to 150 kilo tons per meter square. So modulus of elasticity is stress divided by strength. Here stress is known as unconfined, unconfined compressive strength. So strain is uh, not given, but as per IS code for clay soil, failure will be taken place at 20% strain. So x modulus equal to stress by strain. This is divided by 20% strain. So we will get ES value equal to 750 kilometer per meter square. The initial settlement or immediate settlement is equal to Q into B. Q is known as net foundation pressure. It is equal to 150. B is known as width of the foundation, 2 meters. 1 minus Pisan's ratio equal to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 whole square divided by ES. X to modulus of elasticity is equal to 750 kilometer per meter square into influencing factor for square footing equal to 0 0.56. 0 0.56. The model 2. A square footing 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters is at a depth of 1 meter in a deep deposit of dry soil. The average standard fermentation distance of sand was found to be 20. So, dry density of sand equal to 18 kilonewton per meter cube. So, estimate the settlement of foundation would be a load of 500 kilonewtons acting on the footing. Take your Pisan's ratio 0 0.35, influencing factor equal to 0 0.9. Even this is square footing, influence value is given in the problem. So you need to take that value one. So net foundation pressure equal to load by area, load equal to 500 divided by say your footing equal to 1.5 by 1.5. Net foundation pressure equal to 222.22 kilo per meter square. So Young's modulus is related to standard penetration number. So Young's modulus is equal to 750 into Corrected SPT number. So S750 SPT number equal to 20 here. So 15,000 kilometer per meter square. X minus R, modulus of elasticity. So immediate settlement is equal to Q into B, 1 minus mu square by ES into S. Q net foundation pressure equal to 222.22. Next, width of the foundation is equal to 1.5 into Pisa's ratio, 1 minus 0 0.35 square divided by X minus 15,000. It influencing factor is known as 0 0.9. So finally, we will get immediate settlement equal to 18.02 meters. That is imaginary problem. 18.2 meters is not uh, taken place. If it is to happen, the building will be submerged in soil. It is an imaginary problem, not a practical problem. So model three. So this problem is frequently asked in JNT examination. So we are putting 3 meters by 2 meters in size, transmits a pressure of 140 kN per meter square on a soil having E equal to 5 into 10 power 4 kN per meter square and the Pisan's ratio equal to 0 0.50. Find the immediate settlement for the footing at the center, assuming it to be A, flexible footing, B, rigid footing, fiber by ratio equal to 1.5. Influence impact is equal to 1.36 for flexible footing. For rigid footing, influence impact is equal to 1.06. So, 
term of our repaired settlement is equal to QB into 1 minus B square by ES into IS. So for flexible footing, Q 140 kiloton per meter square is net foundation pressure width of the footing equal to 2 meters, 1 minus Poisson stretch equal to 0 0.5, 1 minus 0 0.5 square by X1 is 510 power 4 into 1.36 influencing factor for flexible footing. So I have multiplied with 1000 in order to get the settlement in mm. If it is not multiplied with 1000, you will get the settlement in meters. So in order to convert the millimeters to con meters in millimeters, the equation is multiplied with 1000. So immediate settlement equal to 5.712 millimeters for flexible footing. For rigid footing, the equation is same, values are the same except influencing factor. For rigid footing, influencing factor equal to 1.06. So if you know settlement of uh, flexible footing, you can also find out the settlement of rigid footing by using this equation. So the relation is immediate settlement is directly proportional to influencing factor. So settlement of rigid foundation divided by settlement of a flexible foundation equal to influencing factor of rigid foundation by influencing factor of flexible foundation. So in settlement of rigid foundation is equal to 4.452 millimeters. So primary are concentration settlement. So primary, this is due to expulsion of water. So already I have discussed in soil mechanics consolidation chapter. The equation primary settlement equal to H into Cc by 1 plus C naught log 10 sigma naught dash plus delta sigma by sigma naught dash. So SP is known as primary settlement. H equal to thickness of compressible layer. Cc is known as compression index. So 0 0.009 into liquid limit minus 10 percent this is for so compression is equal to 0 0.009 into liquid limit minus 10 percent it is given by terza for undisturbed soil mass so cc is equal to 0 0.007 into liquid limit minus 10 percent for remoded soil for disturbed soil that equation is given by skeptics so generally consolidated settlement is found for Undisturbed soil submerged that is in field. So generally, we find, we find this concentration segment in field so that it is an undisturbed soil mass. So we need to use this equation 0 0.009 into liquid limit minus 10 percent. Sometimes in problem, CC will not be given directly, liquid limit will be given by using this compression index uh, equation. We should find out the compression index by using the liquid limit. Sometimes it may be given directly as the problem. So delta sigma equal to stress increment at the center of clay layer. So before construction of the building, there will not be any stress. So because of construction of the building, the stress may be increased. The stress increment. Delta sigma is due to stress increment due to construction of the building. So delta sigma is given by Q by V plus Q Z power square. So Q B square. So if it is, if it is load, take Q by V plus two Z per square. If it is pressure, then you should uh, multiply with the size of the footing. Now to convert into load Q into V square by V plus two Z per square. This is a two is to one distribution method. Two is to one distribution method. So sigma naught dash equal to effective stress at the center of the clay. So when load is applied on the soil mass, the top layer water escapes through top layer and bottom layer. So there may be some variation in uh, settlement in top layer and bottom layer. But center settlement, uh, we can get a uniform settlement. That's, that's why the effective stress is determined at the center of the clay layer. So this is model one. Figure shows the geometry of a steep footing. It is a steep footing supporting the load bearing wall of a three story building. And the properties of clay layer are given in the figure. If the pressure acting on the footing is 40 kiloton per meter square find the primary settlement of the foundation so the foundation is resting on a clay layer the foundation is a steep footing width of the footing equal to 1.2 meters depth of the footing equal to 1 meter the depth of clay layer equal to 6 meters the properties of clay layer are 
is equal to 0 0.8, e naught equal to 0 0.40, gamma sat equal to 20 kilo per meter square. So, see here, water table is at the bottom of the pudding. Above the water table, unit weight of sal equal to 18 kilo per meter square. Below water table, unit weight of gamma sat equal to 20 kilo per meter square. So, pressure acting on the pudding equal to 40 kilo per meter square. So, first find out effect crystals at the center of the clay layer considering from ground surface. From ground surface, from ground surface to bottom of the footing, that means 1 meter depth, there is no water table. So, effect crystals is equal to gamma into z, gamma equal to 18, z, thickness of soil equal to 1 meter. Plus, below the water table, the soil is below the bottom of the foundation, the soil is submerged in water. So, we need to take a submerged unit weight. So, submerged gamma dash equal to gamma sat minus gamma w. So, here gamma sat equal to 20, gamma w equal to 10. So, into z, we need to consider up to center of the clay layer. So, total thickness of layer equal to 6. So, up to the center of the clay layer, we need to consider. So, here z equal to 3 meters. So, effective stress at the center of the clay layer equal to 48.57 kN per meter square. Now, stress increment at the center of the clay layer. So, load is given. That's why the load is converted to, sorry, pressure is given. So, that the pressure should be converted to load. So, Q into, it is a steep footing, B into 1. So, we need to consider 1 meter length. Steep footing means, just like 1, it is continuous, length is continuous. So that we need to consider only 1 meter length of the footing. So Q into B into 1 divided by B plus 2Z. So here 2Z means depth from bottom of the footing to center of the clay layer. So depth from bottom of the footing to the center of the clay layer. That means 6 meters thickness of a layer from the bottom of the footing. So center of the clay layer means 6 by 2, 3 meters. So here 2Z equal to 3 meters. So 2 into width of the footing at top equal to 1.2 meters into 1 meter length divided by 1.2 plus 3 into 1.0. So delta sigma equal to 11.428 kN per meter square at the center of the clay area. So primary settlement is equal to H into CC by 1 plus C naught into log 10 sigma naught dash plus delta sigma by sigma naught dash. So here thickness of clay area equal to 6 meters CC value equal to 0 0.8 by 1 plus E naught. Initial value dash equal to 0 0.40 log 10. So, initial power button pressure at the center of the clay layer equal to 48.57 plus stress increment equal to 11.48 divided by initial power button pressure equal to 48.57. So, primary sediment is equal to 0 0.314 meters, that means 314 millimeters. So, model 2. Here, I am considering the effect of water table. So, calculate the primary settlement of the clay layer shown in figure. So, due to an increase in pressure of 30 kN per meter square, mid height of the clay layer. Also, calculate the settlement when water table rises to the ground surface. So, case 1, I am taking before water table. When there is no water table, H equal to thickness of clay layer equal to 2.5 meters. Pressure acting at the mid height of the clay layer equal to 30 kN per meter square. CC value equal to 0 0.22, initial value dash equal to 1.30. So, primary settlement equal to H into CC by 1 plus E naught, log 10, sigma naught dash plus delta sigma by sigma naught dash. So, H equal to thickness of clay layer, 2.5 meters, CC is known as compression index. So, it is given in the problem, 0 0.22, divided by 1 plus E naught, initial value dash it is given the problem 1.30 into log 10. So, sigma naught dash effective stress at the center of the clay layer. So, we need to find out this. So, top 4 meters, there is no water table. So, effective stress is equal to gamma into z. Here, gamma equal to 20, z equal to 4 meters. So, 4 into 20. Next, we need to calculate the effective stress at the center of the clay layer. Center of the clay layer. Total thickness equal to 2.5. Center of the clay means 2.5 by 2. So 2.5 by 2. Next, 
gamma equal to 18 cylinder per metric cube. So 18 into 2.5 by 2. Sigma naught equal to 1 to 5 by kilowatt per meter square. So delta sigma equal to pressure at mid height of the clay layer. It is given in the problem 30 kilowatt per meter square. So if you apply all these values in the above equation, you will get a sigma naught equal to 1 to 5 by kilowatt per meter square. Case 2, when water table rises to the ground surface. So you can see in the figure. So first we need to find out the sigma naught dash. Sigma naught dash equal to first 4 meter up to 4 meters depth. So we need it is submerged in water. So 4 into gamma dash 20 minus 10 into plus we need to consider the pressure up to the center of the clay layer. So 2.5 by 2 equal to 1.25 into gamma dash. Gamma dash means gamma sat minus gamma dash, 18 minus 10. So effective pressure at the center of the clay layer equal to 15 kilometer per meter square. So if you're substituting all these values in our equation, we will get primary settlement is equal to 48.9 millimeters. When there is no water table, settlement is equal to 26.7 mm. When there is no water table, settlement equal to 26.7 mm. When water would rise to the ground surface, Settlement is 48.9 m. So the conclusion is settlement increases due to rise in water table. So model 3. So in this case, initially the water table is at 1 meter step. Then due to construction work, the water table is lowered by 5 meters. So what is the change in settlement of the soil? That we need to find out here. So the soil profile consists of 6 meters of sand, unlined by naturally consolidated layer 2 meters thick. Groundwater table is at a depth of 1 meter below the ground layer. The dry unit weight is 17 kN per meter cube. Gamma sat equal 21 kN per meter cube. Properties of place are gamma sat 20 kN per meter cube. Initial wire ratio 1.0. Compression index equal to 0.5. So due to construction operation, the groundwater table is lowered to 5 meters below the ground level. So what is the consolidation settlement due to lowering the water table? So when water table is lowered, what will happen? Pore water pressure decreases, effective stress increases. So if effective stress increases, what will happen? So what is the nature of effective stress? It compresses the solid grains. So because of some compression of solid grains, there will be some change in a vertical displacement of soil. So that we need to find out. So you can see here, initial condition, the water table is at 1 meter depth. So due to construction operations, the water table is lowered up to 5 meters depth below the ground surface. So first figure, initial condition. Second is, due to construction operation, the water table is lowered. So first I am finding the initial power button pressure. So up to 1 meter depth, there is no water table. So effective is equal to 1 into 70. So below 1 meter depth, there is a water table. So what is soil is submerged in water. So gamma dash into z. So 21 minus 10. So here the thickness of sand layer is 5 meters. Thus, we need to consider up to center of the clay layer. So 2 by 2 equal to 1 meters. Then gamma dash 20 minus 10. So gamma dash into so initial over button pressure equal to 82 kilowatt per meter square. So due to construction operation, the water table is lowered. So now again we need to consider the effective stress. Here are effective stress equal to 5 into 17. Up to 5 meters there is no water table. So effective stress equal to 5 into 17 plus beyond 5 meters the soil is submerged in water. So for sand layer, the remaining depth is 1 meter. So gamma dash into z, 21 minus 10 into 1 meter, plus we need to consider up to center of the clay layer only. So 2 meters by 2 equal to 1 meter into gamma dash. Gamma dash equal to 20 minus 10. So sigma naught dash plus delta sigma equal to 106 kiloton per meter square. So consolidation settlement is given by h into cc by 1 plus c naught log 10. Sigma naught dash plus data sigma by sigma naught dash. Here H is known as thickness of clay layer 2 meters, compression index 0 
by 1 plus initial void ratio equal to 1.0 log 10 so pressure due to increase in effective stress equal to 106 by initial over pressure equal to 82 kilonewton per meter square for primary statement equal to 55.7 millimeters so erosion effect this is model 4 so instead of reading the problem because of size of the problem is small so i am explaining the problem with the help of this sketch so before erosion the soil is not eroded so before erosion the soil properties are there like this so figure one shows the soil profile before erosion so the water table is at ground level up to 18 meters depth there is a sand layer water content on the sand layer equal 20 percent density of sand layer equal to 22 kilometer per meter cube then after sand there is a clay depth of clay layer is equal to 3 meters the properties of clay layer are gamma b equal to 20 kilometer per meter cube water content equal to 31 percent specific gravity equal to 2.9 cc value equal to 0 0.25 so due to erosion the top 10 meters is meter soil is eroded so up to 18 meters sand is there but due to erosion the top 10 meters of sand is eroded so this top 10 meters will be eroded so that we need to consider only 8 meters sand so after erosion the building is constructed because of the building there is increasing pressure 50 km per meter square the remaining properties are set so here there is a over consolidation effect is there. Over consolidation effect is here. So because the present condition, the pressure is low. In past condition, the pressure is more. So it is known as over consolidated soil. So we need to find out the pre-consolidation pressure first. So pre-consolidation pressure at the center of the clay layer before erosion is given by so first top 18 meters it is submerged in soil so gamma dash into z effective stress equal to gamma dash into z 18 into gamma sat minus gamma w 22 minus 10 plus so the second layer is clay layer we need to construct to half of the clay layer so pre consolidation pressure at center of the clay layer so 3 meters by 2 1.5 meters into gamma dash 20 minus 10 so pre consolidation pressure equal to 231 kilo per Meter scale. So, second case due to erosion, it is treated as over concentrated soil. For over concentrated soil, primary settlement equal to H into C gamma divided by 1 plus C naught. So, it is a over concentrated soil. That's why you should not take a CC value. Compression should, compression index should not be, you should not take compression index. You should take over concentrated compression index C gamma by 1 plus C naught into log 10 sigma naught dash plus delta sigma by sigma naught dash primary settlement equal to h krishna sir so solve the equation sir for the all of that sir i pen the last slide sir sir primary settlement equal to h thickness of clay layer the compression index equal to 0 0.05 it is given in the problem divided by 1 plus initial y ratio equal to 0 0.9 log 10 sigma naught dash equal to initial over button pressure plus increase in pressure 50 so sigma naught dash equal to 2 3, sigma naught dash equal to now we should calculate the pressure after erosion so after erosion top 10 is removed we need to consider only 8 meter depth of sand so sigma naught dash equal to effective stress is equal to gamma dash into z gamma dash equal to 22 minus 10 into thickness of sand layer equal to 8 meters plus we need to consider half of the clay layer so thickness equal to 3 meters half of the clay layer thickness is 3 by 2 1 by meters into gamma dash 20 minus 10 so sigma naught dash equal to 111 kilonewton per meter square so sigma naught dash equal to 1011 plus increase increment of stress equal to 15 divided by the so sigma naught dash equal to 111 kilometer per meter square. So 111 plus 50 by 111 
after substituting all these values in this equation, primary settlement equal to 0 0.0125 millimeters. After converting it into millimeters, so 12.5 millimeters. So primary settlement equal to 12.5 millimeters. So erosion effect is there. Next. Lowering of water table effect. effect of lowering of water table is also discussed. Next effect of water table. This is a water table. This is normal condition. So model one, model two, model three, model four. So at the same time, initial settlement also I have discussed. So with this, the problems related to settlement is over. Thank you, sir. No, I have to Sir, graph carry in, sir. Malar min and tagin and nanya one over do. One twenty six Nitish. Not I'll go now. Nitish. No, sir. No, sir. Need dialogue or something? No, seven, sir. Nitish, need dialogue or something? Sure. The recording will be saved in one hour. Yes, sir. अब